Okay, welcome everyone. Um, we've waited a few minutes, but we are hoping quite a few more people will join, but I think we're going to get started anyway. Um, the webinar will be recorded, so if anyone has to leave or lost internet or anything like that, don't worry, we will um, send it to you afterwards along with a few other things. Yes, so welcome. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Matt. Uh, this is Barack. I run the drone operations at Aerobotics, so I'll be dealing with pilots on a daily basis and basically my main goal is creating this network of pilots across the world to service all our clients, making sure they have the right hardware, the right training. Um, and Barack heads up the fulfillment and planning. Uh, drone operations falls under there as one of the um, things um, and basically making sure that from when a contract comes in, um, it's completely fulfilled until the very last, through the flights and then through the data until the client has everything that he has paid for. Okay, so we, this webinar, we're gonna kind of just go through all the information. There's been quite a lot of new pilots that have joined on, um, and so we wanna make sure that everyone has a basic understanding or high level understanding of what we do at Aerobotics and basically how you can get involved and then we'll run through some of the flight tips um, and upload tips. All right, so here's the agenda for today. Um, firstly, I'm gonna go through Aerobotics, just a couple things about how we started, what we do, um, then a quick company update, just a few points on things that have happened recently. Uh, flying for aerobotics, so basically how to get involved, what you can expect by working with us. Some flying tips, um, onboarding, so technically how to get involved. And then at the end, we'll have a quick Q&A. So you guys are welcome to use the Q&A function or the comments um, and, and write some questions throughout the webinar and then we'll get to them at the end. And then, at the, as I said, we'll, we'll record this as well, and then we're going to attach a feedback form, the Flying Tips PDF, just one pager, and uh, the J uh, July newsletter that we sent out a couple of weeks ago. Okay, so firstly, what is Aerobotics? Aerobotics is a, a South African startup in the ag tech space that combines drone and satellite imagery with our machine learning algorithms to identify pest and disease for farmers across the world. So what we basically do is create this 3D model, as you can see in the presentation, of every tree in the orchard. So we would use the drone and the satellite imagery to create visual and multispectral maps for our farmers and then I identify health issues, volume, area, all those kind of things on a per tree level. So basically we can reconstruct almost every tree in the orchard and give the farmer valuable insights at an early stage to prevent any loss. So through drone imagery, you obviously get the visual and you get the multispectral. This is an example of the visual maps you would get. Most people who have surveyed before would know this. So on the left, you would see a specific block for a farmer. So the farmer would sign up, draw up all these specific blocks on his farm or his orchards. Um, the drone would come in and fly the whole farm and then he would be able to view it. And this is the kind of visual map that the farmer would see. And then he can obviously zoom in and see the high resolution image. So when flying, we need our, our pilots to have a, a visual of at least 15 megapixels so we can get this high resolution for the farmer. And this way we can obviously identify the trees easier and then apply our algorithms to the trees. The other metrics that we use that are quite important, um, health obviously being the most important, area, height and volume. So through the multispectral imagery, um, we can provide farmer, the farmer with all these kind of maps. So with the microsense, you get your obviously basic NDVI. And here, once our algorithms have identified all the trees, we can give every single tree a health rating between negative one and one. Obviously, dark red being unhealthy and dark green being healthy. So here, the farmer can now go on, onto a specific orchard that he wants to look at, filter on the unhealthy trees, and create a scout path or scout route to go and identify just those specific trees that are under stress um, and figure out what's wrong with them. So we have a scouting platform as well and a scouting app that you can use and download these drone maps, go to every single tree that's under stress, like a GPS coordinate on Google Maps, um, take some photos, write some notes, all those kind of things. Um, and then other important metrics are your area, height and volume. And that's just quite useful for identifying your, you know, your heights over time. Um, so normally farmers would have about three flights within a season. 
and then they can, can compare between dates. Have their trees got any bigger? Have they got any taller? Have they got any healthier? Or have they got worse? But the idea is to basically identify the, the problems on a per tree level at an early stage um, and help the farmer and provide him with the tools to fix these at an early stage and prevent any loss. So to sum it up, it kind of starts with the early problem detection. So we would ask our drone pilots to go and fly the specific farm for the farmer. Uh, with the drone imagery and applying our machine learning algorithms, we'll ident identify all the trees in the orchard and then identify what trees specifically are under stress. We would then provide the farmer and the scouts with the scouting platform and tools that they need to um, scout intelligently. So they can identify which trees are under stress and go to walk to them into the field, um, take some photos, write some notes and compare those over time. And then obviously with the multiple flights, it helps them with their reporting. So the reports will allow them to make important decisions based on the data while management zones let you save input costs. So through the drone imagery, we get the reporting and then also the satellite imagery. The farmer would get this every two weeks for free and he can also identify areas that are, um, areas that are under stress in terms of water, so moisture maps, all those kind of things as well. So just a quick introduction into Aerobotics as the company itself. So a lot of you probably don't know, but we originated in 2014 and our main business was actually building drones. So as you can see here, we built a few fixed wings back in the day. So we would uh, build these drones, we would find farmers to fly, we would go fly the drones ourselves, we would upload the data, process the data, and then present the data back to the farmer. So we did the whole thing. Um, and with two or three employees at the time, it was obviously quite difficult to scale with all the new clients that we were getting on board. Um, we also realized that we couldn't compete with uh, DJI, so we decided to kind of scrap building drones and outsource that uh, section completely and focus mainly, obviously, on the data analytics. So Aerobotics is a data analytics company. We don't do any of the flying ourselves. We outsource the flying, um, and that's obviously why we need you guys. Okay, just skip one slide. Okay, um, so flying for aerobotics, there's a specific setup that we need you to fly with. So not many people would know or have flown with the setup before, but we need the visual and the multispectral captured in the same flight. Um, most people would either capture the visual or the multispectral separately, um, but we need them captured in the same flight so we can create the visual and multispectral maps all in one go and identify the trees from the visual and the multispectral. So in the pictures you can see is an example of the Phantom 4 Pro and Microsense setup. So the compatible drones that we're using at the moment that most of our pilots are using are the Phantom 4 Pro, anything from the Matrice range, and anything from the Inspire range. Why are we only using these ones is because these cameras have a visual of at least 15 megapixels. So Phantom 4 Pro, I think it's 20. And then from the Matrice and Inspire, you get your X4S, your X5, X5S, all those kind of um, cameras. And those are at least 15 megapixels. But these drones are also big enough to carry the extra payload of the Microsense camera. So Microsense is our preferred camera for the multi-spectral. So here you get your Red Edge uh, M, MX, and your Ultim. And by just using Microsense, we obviously guarantee just a certain output every time, a certain quality. Um, so we need to always get back to our farmer with the best quality camera and that's the microsense we believe um, And so if we had to use a slant range or a parrot sequoia You might get different visual or different multi-spectral maps and qualities over time and we don't really want that So we'd like to stick to just the microsense range for now and hopefully test some one new ones as as we get going, but uh, We have tested other drones So there's lots of pilots that have their own drones that they've built like hexacopters um, and then there's also other visuals that they've used like Sony cameras, uh, SL7 I think it is we've tested and the A6000. So these cameras have at least a, a 15 megapixel uh, quality. So those are actually fine to use. Uh, previously we, up, our uploader was built on the X of data of DGI, but now we've changed it to allow multiple different brands. So as long as your drone has a visual of at least 15 megapixels, it doesn't really matter if it's DJI or Sony or whatever it is, as long as it's good quality. But then the multi-spectral, we prefer to have the microsense. So I've just got an example here of one of the drones. 
So this is obviously your, your Phantom 4 Pro. Here's your visual that's built in on the Phantom 4 and then your micro sense at the back. So this is a custom amount that we've built. And this obviously allows the micro sense to take photos at the same time as the visual. The micro sense is powered by an external battery. And this is obviously the, the sunlight sensor for the micro sense. I know the Red Edge 3, which is also compatible with our, our, our systems, um, is fine. But those, the Red Edge 3, some of the really old ones, didn't come with the sunlight sensor. And we've noticed banding if you don't have these sunlight sensors. So it's important that you have this. If you don't, uh, you can order one through MicroSense. Um, yeah, it's quite important, obviously, with the different light coming in that it regulates it and you don't get the striped multispectral imagery. So yeah, this is an example of it. Um, yeah, just to clarify that you need the visual and the multispectral taken in the same flight. So you need these custom mounts for your drone. Um, the same goes for an Inspire or Matrice. So we do sell these mounts and we have partners in South Africa and the US that sell these mounts. So if anyone needs um, a microsense or mount or integration kit or anything like that, we can, we can hook you up with that. Okay, then just going through company update quickly. So yeah, super exciting. Aerobotics is now in 18 different countries and it seems to be a new country every week. So we're growing really fast, which is super exciting. We've got clients in some very strange countries like uh, Uzbekistan and, and Turkey and stuff. So it's been a great learning curve, but we, you know, the goal is to be in every country across the world as, as quick as possible. So we're looking for pilots everywhere. Um, and yeah, super excited about that. Um, and then the aerobotics team in Cape Town has moved to a new location. We've obviously expanded really quickly and so has our staff. So we are about 80 people at the moment in Cape Town. And so we've moved to our own building in Greenpoint. It's a nice three story building, which is really cool. And then we've also opened up a new office in Los Angeles in the US. So this was a few months ago um, and we've hired up quite a few sales guys to get the ball rolling on that side. And as I'll mention later, we're having multiple events in the US currently to get some more growers on board. And we've seen quite a lot of work coming through the US already. So it's going to be after South Africa, it's probably going to be our biggest market at the moment. And then the agronomy and tech team are working on some cool yield estimates as well as disease and pest detection. So the yield estimate is obviously something that we realize is super valuable for the grower. So we're trying to figure out how we can make this possible for the farmer. And you know, if we can identify how much each tree or how much each orchard can yield, it can save the farmer tons of money and help him with planning and stuff. So this is a very valuable tool that we want to add. So we've been spending quite a lot of time on getting that going. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we've released a brand new infield scouting application. So this was released also, I think, a couple months ago. Um, also had a live webinar on that. But basically, it's a smartphone app uh, where you can download the drone maps, as I mentioned earlier, and pick out the particular trees that you want to look at, and then go and write notes, take pictures, track over time, get some reporting. So that's really cool as well. Just a couple updates from the company. And then these are the, the trees and tech events that I was talking about now in the States. Um, so as I've been saying, um, Aerobotics is saving growers all over the world time and money with the latest farm management software. And we really want our drone partners to get involved as well. So this is mainly targeted at getting farmers and growers on board in the US. Um, but a lot of our drone partners have go, gone to these events already and we really want you guys to come as well. You know, bring your family, bring your networks. Not only can you be a drone partner at Aerobotics, but you can also be a reseller where you also get paid for bringing clients on board. So it's also just super useful to get more information about the company um, and what we do and some of our new exciting product updates. So we've already started with these events. The first one was on the 9th, um, but we do have four more across the US coming up. So uh, Paso Robles is tomorrow, I believe. That's in California. Uh, Tifton in Georgia on the 16th, Sebring, uh, Florida on the 18th, and then Wenatchee in Washington on the 23rd. So um, if you're really keen to go, just let me know. We'll send you an invite. Um, it's for free. Um, lots of cool prizes and, and, and food there. So uh, the, the events have been really successful so far. 
And so if you are in the area and you want to attend, just let us know. We'll swing in and invite your way. All right, and then moving on to flying for aerobotics, getting into the specifics on how to get involved and what you can kind of expect working with us. So uh, as I mentioned previously, you know the sort of hardware that we require to fly for us. Um, but once you've onboarded, we would help you with all your pre-flight administration and compliance. So we are in touch with the farmers, obviously, and we will let you know when we need you to fly, what time, where the place is, the shape files, site permission letters, anything you may need um, in terms of regulations. Um, so we would give you all that information beforehand and obviously just try and make your job as easy as possible. We would give you the contact details of the farmer and, and all the instructions you need and then obviously all the flight parameters as well. And then we obviously have a dedicated drone ops team to help plan these logistics. So we're uh, a biggish team now and we've in, like, um, employed a couple more people. So um, we're doing really well. We've you know, operationalized a lot of our processes and we've got a lot of good processes in place now with BRAC. And um, yeah, we're making it super easier for the, or a lot easier for the pilots and making sure they have everything they need. And we obviously giving feedback to the pilots and any questions you have, we like giving responses really quickly and making sure you don't have any problems when you're flying. Then we have regular hardware and software training. So the webinar is obviously part of that. Um, but we do, or well, we just created a new drone partners webpage where we basically put all the information you need to know, kind of all the information from this webinar in a sense, but all the information you need in terms of hardware, uploading, flight tips, flight issues, um, contracts, you know, how to sign up, all those kind of things, how to become a pilot, um, all that um, information. So if you're interested, you can go to that webpage. If you go to aerobotics.com, you'll see a drone partners tab at the bottom right of the page. Otherwise, just go to about.aerobotics.com forward slash drone partners and you can get all the information you need there. And we have a simplified and streamlined data upload process. So we would essentially give the drone partner or drone pilot all the information he needs to do and all he needs to do is arrive on the farm, survey the farm and then upload it within 12 hours. So our promise to the farmer is to give them their data on a per tree level within three days of the flight being completed. So if the pilot is taking four days to upload the data, then we've already lost out on that promise. So it's super important that the pilot is, has got a good internet speed, first of all, but is also uploading straight away. So you survey your farm and then you upload the images that night within 12 hours. Um, so we've got a simplified process that helps you with that. Obviously, we know that the data associated with these farms is, is large, like a 100 hectare farm would mean about 30, 40 gigs of data. So we need to have a good process to help with that. So all you would really need to do, um, I think we've got it coming on later with the upload tips, but all you need to do is drop your DJI images, drop your multi-spectral images, select which blocks you wanted to upload to, it would auto-select for you. Um, and then press upload. And then if you lose your internet connection or something happens, you can easily just refresh the page, redrop the images, and it will continue from where you um, left off. So if, it, if you lost internet on 98%, don't despair. You can just refresh and redrop the images and it will carry on from 98% again. And then we also have our own aerobotics flight planner app. So we're hopefully working on getting a new one. We've had quite a few recommendations from our current pilots, um, but there are a lot of benefits of our Flight Planner app. Unfortunately, it's only for Android at the moment, and we're hoping to get it on iOS, um, but there's a lot of important uses that you can get out of this Flight Planner app. We don't force you to use it. You can use Drone Deploy or whatever you like, um, but obviously some of the benefits from this app would help you a lot on your day. So, once we've assigned a job to you, it would automatically come up on your app. So you would know exactly what blocks to fly and where they are. And you can actually use the app to get to that farm, like on Google Maps. Um, and then all you need to do is select what drone you're using. So in this example, it's a Phantom 4. And then we have preset parameters and flight um, for you already. So if you're using a Phantom 4, then we would set the white balance and exposure and aperture and all of those things for you. So all you need to do is say whether it's sunny or cloudy and then it will completely do all the, the settings for you. And then you can play around with your hatch angle, your altitude, your overlap, your side lap and your speed. 
obviously we have set recommendations so we prefer you to fly it with the 75 percent overlap 75 percent side lap between 9 and 12 meters per second speed and then the heights between 80 and 120 but I'll, I'll get onto that a bit later but yeah it's, it's got a lot of benefits but as I said do whatever is more comfortable for you so if you're more comfortable with um, drone deploy then that's great um, as long as you are collecting the images with the right parameters and it all looks good at the end of the day then it's it's not an issue okay so what's next for the drone ops team and, and aerobotics uh, we've been working on an a store lately which we want to get out pretty soon so the idea of this is to have a South African and a USA A store where people can buy the whole package to fly for us. So you can buy your drone with your camera, with the batteries, with the mounts, with the integration kit, with the tablet, um, with the memory cards, everything you need in one like convenient location. Obviously it's difficult to get the Microsense batteries and the mounts because they're all being sold at different places. So we want to create you know, a Phantom package, a Matrice package, an Inspire package where you can get everything you need all in one place and hopefully at discount um, prices as well. So hopefully we'll have that up and running soon. But in the meantime, you can still order through us. We can provide you with quotes and prices on the kit. And if you want to just buy a Microsense or you just want to buy a mount or you just want to buy a drone, you can do that as well. We sell everything separately as well. But we basically just want to make it one place where you can get everything you need in one go. And then as I mentioned, a new flight app. So we've got quite a lot of recommendations and we've spent a couple of days in the field with our pilots as well, um, running through the app with them, seeing how they fly, asking the questions and seeing what can be valuable or what can be added to this app to make it a lot more easier for our pilots. So we've got quite a few um, things we would like to add and hopefully in the next quarter we'll, we'll see a new flight app. The new equipment, um, we all know that the Phantom 4 range has been discontinued and no longer in production. And at the moment that's probably the most used drone uh, in terms of flying for us. Most people have the Phantom 4 Pro and Microsense kit. Um, so hopefully the DJI release a Phantom 5 range. But if not, we are doing demos with other kind of drones like the hexacopters. We've done a couple of demos with fixed wings as well. Um, as you would have seen, we started originally with fixed wings, but the, we've encountered a couple of issues. Obviously with a fixed wing, it flies really fast. So if it's flying too fast, um, you won't get enough images from your microsense. And if it's flying too high, you're not gonna get a good resolution. But mainly fixed wings normally only have a one camera payload. So it doesn't have the opportunity for dual payload. If it does, that's great. Um, but at the moment, the visual that's generated from the microsense is very pixelated and it's not great. So we need a visual camera and a multi-spectral camera on the drone. Um, and as long as it's being flown at kind of the same parameters, you know, at the same sort of height, maybe it's flying a bit faster, but as long as it's getting enough images and we're happy to, to demo it. So there are other means that we're looking at. We want to incorporate other equipment into our repertoire. Um, so we are working on that and hoping that there are more combinations that we can use. All we know is that the microsense is a preferred multi-spectral camera that we want to use and you need a, a visual of at least 15. If you can put it on one drone, no matter whether it's DJI or your own build or a fixed wing, hopefully we can make it work. And then at the end of the day, we want to create this drone marketplace where we have this network of pilots that have, you know, <coughs> readily available information to hardware, to flight tips, to you know everything they basically need to get their job done. Um, we basically all we just want to make the job easier for our drone pilots, and so at the end of the day, they can focus on what they love doing, and that's obviously flying drones. So let us take care of everything else and let us help you make your job easier. All right, and then moving on to some flying tips. Obviously flying in agriculture and agriculture and flying for aerobotics, there's a couple of things that would be different and there's a couple of things you would only learn or know on the job. Um, and we've realized that the first couple of times that pilots fly for us, they have you know, issues with certain things. So we've kind of compiled a list of tips and parameters that we want the pilot to have before he flies for the first time. So if, if we know that you know, 
missing coverage is a, is a common issue. So we want to make sure that everyone knows this beforehand and knows how to fix it. So the first time you fly, the data is perfect. Because if you have to refly, you have to do it at your own cost. It takes time and money out of your life and out of ours because we have to pay for the processing twice and then obviously the data is late. So we want to make sure that every time you fly, the data is perfect. So these flight tips are really important and, and really important to follow. So um, this is what we've learned over the last couple of years of flying with aerobotics. And these are what kind of some of the issues that our current pilots have gone through. So it's important that you are implementing these general practices and these general tips and using them every time you fly. Okay, so number one, take off from the highest part of your mission. Obviously, a lot of farms have a quite a big elevation difference. And if you are flying at the lowest point first and then you've got an elevation difference of 30 meters, so your drone starts here um, and, your, and your field looks like this, by the time you get to here, your field of view is not going to be the same um, and you're basically going to be much closer to the ground. So you're going to have a bit of missing images in the corner. So it's easier to start at the top of the field um, and work your way down. And these, the field of view gets even bigger then. But we recommend if there is an elevation difference of 20, 30 meters, that you split it up into two flights um, because there's a good chance that there'll be an issue with the, the coverage. Number two, fly between 9.30 and 3.30. So the general rule of thumb is to fly two hours before and two hours after solar noon. But obviously during summer, you can extend that a little bit. So in summertime, you can fly till probably about 3.30 because the sun is still very high in the sky. Obviously before 9.30 and after 3.30, the sun is going to be further down and you're going to get all these shadows on your trees. And I mean, most of the guys or the clients that we, we fly for have big citrus trees of over three, four meters. So if the sun is almost down, you're going to get these massive shadows on the field and it's going to affect your health stats. So it's important that you stick to flying between these times and don't fly any earlier or any later than those times. Start and end the day with smaller trees. So if it is a lot of hectares you have to do in one day, rather start with the smaller trees and end with the smaller trees, because obviously if you start with a smaller tree at 9.30, there's going to be less shadows on it. If you start with the really big trees when the sun is further down, then you're going to get bigger shadows. So it's just a little tip to rather start with smaller trees if you've got a full day. Otherwise, rather just start a bit later. Ensure you fly with a buffer with enough coverage when selecting boundary. So this has been a big issue that we've seen and probably 80% of why um, blocks and farms have to be reflown, and that's because there's not enough coverage on the end. So often what we see is that when a drone turns, it often misses the photo when it turns. And then often farmers are drawing their boundaries a bit too tight and actually cutting off the last line of trees um, just to maybe cut down their hectares. Um, but it's so that's why it's super important that when you are flying, if you're flying for a block, like this, that you want to make sure that your flight path is going above and beyond the boundary and also flying on this last bit here. So if, you, if the drone is turning over here, that is still taking another photo at the top here and making sure that there's enough coverage on the edges. So what we often see is that um, people will cut their flight path short and then short on the edges as well. And then we would see quite a lot of missing images on here and then on the top as well. So rather expand your flight path a bit too much and rather have a bit too many images than too little. Okay, and then you only need to fly with the three microsense bands. So we only need the red edge, the red and the new infrared file processing to provide the, the farmers with the health and chlorophyll maps. So we don't need the blue and the green. Um, obviously we're getting the RGB already from the visual camera. So we don't need the, the blue and the green to generate any false RGB. So when you fly for us, please switch off the green and the blue bands on your microsense. It also helps reduce your data by 40%. So if you're flying a lot, if there's a big farm you need to fly and you're flying and uploading with five bands, you're going to have 40% more data than you would need because we don't need those other two bands. So rather just switch them off and it means less data and a quicker upload time for you. Okay, and then this is the flight parameters and tips that I'll be circulating afterwards. So we put this in a nice one page PDF. We've also translated it into Spanish for our Latin America uh, pilots. Um, so we'll spread that afterwards and you guys can have a look. It's quite useful just to bring this with you on every job and just making sure that you've got the right parameters and that you're following this. 
So as I was mentioning earlier, the overlap and side lap needs to be at least 75%. So based on our height and our speeds, this is the overlap that we need. Um, some pilots use 80% just to make sure that they have enough coverage on the edge. Um, and then in terms of weather, we need full sun or full cloud cover. If you have a cloud or a rolling cloud coming in between a flight, then we're gonna get these big dark patches in the middle of our fields that's gonna affect our health. So if you see a big rolling cloud coming, just rather wait for your flight, um, wait for it to pass and then start your flight. So it needs to be completely sunny or completely cloudy so we don't get different lights within our um, fields. And then speed fly between nine and 12, um, height between 80 and 120. So if you're flying smaller trees, like um, new trees or a vineyard, you wanna fly closer to 80 meters so we can get a better resolution um, on the vineyard and it'll be easier for us to pick up where does one tree start and where does the next start. So if you're flying something between half a meter and one and a half meters, please fly closer to 80 meters. We know this will take a little bit longer, um, but it will help us with our algorithms make them more accurate. Um, in general, most people would fly around 100 meters because that's the normal height of the trees. But anything higher than three meters, we're happy for you to fly at the max 120 meters um, and just helps you fly a bit more. And then wind with the Phantom 4 around 20 kilometers per hour, anything faster than that, the, the drone will obviously be off course and then also your images will be a bit skewed. So if there's too much wind, rather wait or postpone the flight. If you need to reschedule due to weather or wind, please let us know as soon as possible so we can relay this to the client. And then in terms of data organization, not many people would think to do this, but it's quite important. Um, it's, you really need to make sure that you file your, your images correctly. So if you're flying um, Barak Farm, name it Barak Farm, name it Flight 1, Flight 2, Flight 3, and then within each flight say RGB and MSP, and then drop the images into each one. Because often you'll need to only upload some of them or you'll need to re-upload this one. Just make sure that it's properly organized so you know where to find these images. It's gonna be difficult when you just throw in all your DGI and all your multi-spectral images just in one folder. It'll be impossible to tell which one's which. And then just a couple tips. Um, obviously, when you're on the field, you need to do a couple checks to make sure that, firstly, that your mic is sent and your visual actually took images. So make sure that there are images, first of all. Make sure that there seems like there's the right, right amount of images. Um, and then check the file size. So if your picture as a size of 0 kilobytes, that probably means it's corrupted and you'll probably need a reflight. Um, and I think that's it. Another good check for when you're on the farm to make sure you have enough coverage is to throw the images into the uploader and just make sure that your flight path is covering all the blocks. So once we've assigned the job to you, you'll get a little blue link in your profile on Aerobotics. You can, and that's where you'll upload your file. So you'll click upload, you'll drop your DGI, you'll drop your MSP, and then you'll be able to see all your RGB and your MSP photos, and then you can make sure that you have enough coverage there. So that's a good way to just check when you're on the field, if you've got enough images, you don't wanna get all the way home and realize that your mic has sent shut off at the, in the last 10 minutes and you don't have enough pictures and you have to go all the way back to refly. So it's important that you're doing a lot of these checks on site before you leave, because you obviously don't want to come back. Okay, and then just some upload suggestions. We recommend an upload speed of at least 10 megabytes per second. Anything slower than that, you'll really struggle uploading things and there's a good chance your images will fail. So make sure you have a good connection um, if you want to upload well. Remember to never upload the same boundary twice. So we've seen this a couple of times where uploads are being split. Someone will upload some of the photos and then they'll upload the next round of photos, but then they've actually copied in the photos from the previous one and then he's uploaded for the same boundary twice. Um, it will automatically void that second one, but it will also cost us some processing. So please be careful when you're uploading. If you're not uploading everything in one go and you're splitting in the, them into uploads, please make sure that the boundaries that are selected at the end are the ones that you actually want to upload to. The problem is we've seen if you, you know, uploading maybe half your farm and there's a couple images in one of the block that you actually didn't mean to upload to, it will automatically select that block. 
and then obviously it'll be uploaded and there won't be enough images and there'll be an issue. So when you're uploading, make sure the blocks that you want to upload are the ones that are being selected and that there's nothing incorrectly being selected. And then please try not to upload boundaries, um, boundaries separately. Obviously, if your upload, if your farm that you flew is 300 hectares, it might be easier to split it into three uploads of 100. But if it's less than 100 hectares, if it's, for example, 76.08 hectares, drag all the images in and make sure that your upload is 76.08 hectares. We don't want to see 10 different uploads of 7 hectares and then we have to try to figure out what boundaries were actually uploaded, are there duplicates and does it actually make 76 in total. So it's really important that you just do one upload if it's less than 100, just drag everything in and upload, make sure there's enough coverage and then just let it sit to upload overnight or whatever it is. And then if your upload gets stuck or you lose internet, just refresh the page. Um, there is an option to resume your upload, to cancel your upload and to start a new upload. Um, if there is an issue with your, with your internet, rather just resume it and redrop all the images. Don't keep trying to start a new upload. Obviously it will take longer and then on our side we'll also have five different uploads for the same thing where four of them are incomplete. So rather just, if you lose your internet, resume or uh, refresh the page, resume your upload, redrop all the images, and then we'll continue from where you left off. And then of course, if you have any issues, you're running late or have any problems, please let us know as soon as possible. So we're easily um, reachable. You can phone us, you can WhatsApp us, you can um, email us, whatever it is. Please let us know as soon as something wrong happens. If you need a reschedule, we need to know that as soon as possible. It needs to preferably done, be done at least 24 hours before. We know that the weather can be variable and change around a lot. So it's important that we're always keeping an eye on the weather and that if anything needs to change, you need to let us know as soon as possible. And then also any issues with flying, we'll help you out straight away. We'd prefer you to phone us when you're in on the farm with an issue, then wait till you get home and you have an issue and then you can't upload for some reason or you don't have enough images. So if you have any problems, let us know straight away and we'll do our best to help you. Okay, and then this is just a quick GIF on how to upload. So if you're following the GIF quickly, you go to your upload block. You'd always pick a visual and multi-spectral. You then go to your folder drop all your DGI images, wait for it to say drop files here. There you can see your flight path and your coverage. Move on to your Microsense, drop all those images. Obviously there's a lot of Microsense images so you would wanna wait for it to go, the screen to go dark and for it to say drop files here and then you can let go. And then move on to the next one. You can obviously see your coverage there. And then make sure that the blocks that are selected are the ones that you want. So obviously in that example, they flew block one and block two um, and they're happy to go ahead. They've got enough coverage and then you can start your process. So you can follow this 10, 10 step process on the Drone Partners webpage. Um, there's the link. Um, it shows you step by step how to upload, how to go to your profile, how to check your coverage, drop your images, all those kind of things with photos. So super useful and super easy to do. Please don't upload your visual and then your multi-spectral in different uploads. We need the visual and the multi-spectral in the same upload, obviously from the same flight, so don't try upload it separately. 99% of the time you're gonna to go to that bucket that says DGI and Microsense. If you have a Sequoia, you press DGI and Sequoia, but make sure you go to that DGI and Microsense bucket and you're dropping your DGI, then you're dropping your Microsense photos and then you're uploading and waiting for it to finish. Okay, and then just moving on to onboarding, so how to officially get involved for working for us and kind of what our nine step process is. So we obviously have a geographic needs analysis, the areas where we have clients and where we need pilots to fly these clients. I'll run that, I mean, I have another slide on that after this that so I'll take you through the specific areas. But basically we would identify what areas we need pilots or we need more pilots of. Um, we would then try source pilots in those areas. So through social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google, um, you name it, we, we do it all, we do all the searches. Um, we would then obviously find pilots. We would then check their licenses, making sure that they're fully licensed. Um, you can't fly for us unless you have the appropriate license for that country. So in South Africa, you need your RPL and your ROC and your drone RLA before you can fly for us. 
We obviously check your equipment, making sure that you have both a visual and a multispectral on the same drone. Um, and obviously maybe a bit of experience in agricultural and flying drones, obviously. Um, if you have all three, then we would set up a small demo of about 10 to 20 hectares. Um, the point of this is just to give you an idea of how to use our flight app, how to upload to our platform and fly with our parameters. So basically just get you comfortable with our system. You would upload the data, we would process it for free, um, and then we would use that little demo data to assess how you fly. So we'll be able to see your flight paths, your heights, your overlaps, all those kind of things to see if you followed the parameters that we set out and obviously checking if it stitches well and the data looks great. Assuming the demo does go well, um, we would then onboard you as a, as a service provider for aerobotics. We would, give you provide, we would provide you with feedback on your flight saying you did these things well, you flew at the right heights, uh, maybe your flight path was a little bit skew or you're actually missing a bit of photos here. We would give you complete feedback on your flight, making sure that the first time that you fly for us, the first time we're actually paying you to fly, that your data is perfect, you're completely comfortable and that you don't have any issues. We obviously need to make sure that the first time you fly for one of our farmers, that we know that the data is going to be good and that we can expect the same quality that you gave us in the demo, if not better. So assuming you pass the demo, we would send you through our agreements and our rates table and proceed to officially onboard you as a drone partner or aerobotic service provider and send you on paid jobs from there. So we obviously have different rates tables for different regions. We have one for South Africa, the US, uh, Europe and then the rest of the world. Um, yeah, so once we've onboarded you, we'll share all those prices with you. Okay, and then just quickly looking at our geographic needs analysis. So in South Africa, these are the regions we have pilots and where we're looking for pilots. So Western Cape is obviously where we started out and where we have quite a lot of, or most of our clients, I would say. Um, Eastern Cape, we've signed a huge deal with there, the Human Storp Co-op, so we're looking for pilots there. Northern Cape, KZN, we just did a massive uh, 5,000 hectare job for Max across KZN. Uh, Limpopo also signed a couple really big guys there. Don't have many pilots in those areas, so always looking for guys there. And then in Pumalanga as well. And then in the US, California is probably our busiest at the moment. That's where we have our office. So we're looking for lots of pilots in, in Northern and Central California. Uh, Florida, Texas, Georgia, Arizona, Washington. Those are the areas where we have clients at the moment where we're looking for pilots and then we hope to move into more states as the years go by or the months go by. And then Latin America, the areas that we're looking for, Chile, Peru, Argentina, Brazil and Mexico. So we've just flown in Chile and Peru this week and then we've in late discussions with clients in Argentina, Brazil and Mexico. If you are in any of these countries and you're interested in, in flying for us, please have a chat to Photo Aria. I believe most of you would know who they are. Um, we've partnered with them and we do all our drone scheduling through them. So if you stay in these countries in Latin America and you're keen to get involved in working for aerobotics, um, please get in contact with Photo Area and ourselves and we can get you on board from there. And then Europe, Portugal, Spain, Italy and France. Um, and then the rest of the world is Australia, New Zealand, Namibia, Malawi, Uzbekistan and Turkey. We just did a demo in Turkey the other day, which was great. Um, a lot of regulations, not so easy to fly there, um, but we got it done at the end of the day and we see a lot of potential in that area as well. Okay, I think that's it from my side. Um, if you have any questions, please send them through on the Q&A or in the comments um, and we'll get to them now. Oh yeah, there's just one more slide on some of our awards that we've won luckily over the last couple of years. One of the most exciting ones that we received uh, lately was most innovative African startup. Um, so obviously getting a lot of recognition and we're really excited about that and we, we're looking forward to lots more awards in the future and making sure we're continuously improving our product and giving our farmers everything they need. Okay, and then I'll obviously get to the questions now, but there are a couple links here for the Drone Partners webpage. The email us uh, whenever you like and give us a call as well if you have some more questions. Um, yeah, that's it from my side. Let's quickly run through some of these questions. Okay, so I've got a couple of questions here. All right, are you able to provide us some rates? Um, yes, we can. So currently 
across the world we pay pilots based on a per hectare or per acre rate. So um, obviously we charge our, our, our farmers a certain amount per hectare or per acre if they're in the States. And then we work out an amount on the gross profit uh, margin what to pay our pilots. So if you want to send me an email, I can send you some of our prices. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to discuss them here for everyone, but uh, yeah, feel free to reach out, I'll send me an email and then I can send you through our rates for whatever area. And obviously I'll need to know what country you're in to send the rates. Um, yes, and then in terms of the profile, after the demo is okay, will you send us access to the profile? Yes, so when you are doing a demo, you can just sign on to aerobotics.com, um, draw the farm, draw up the farm that you are flying, um, and then you can upload through your profile there. And then assuming the demo goes well, we would then convert your client profile into a pilot profile. And then when we assign you jobs, all those jobs will automatically pop up in your pilot profile. So you'll be able to see what job you have. You can download the shape files for those specific um, blocks you need to fly. You can see the size, when you need to fly. And then you would also use that upload link to upload all your, your data when you're done. Um, which one? Yes, so if we are in another state, can we travel to the state that you have needs for? Definitely you can, we've done that before in the past, but it obviously needs to make financial sense for you as well. So on average, the jobs are probably around 100 hectares, 250 acres or so. So if you need to drive to, I don't know, from Florida to Georgia, and the rate that we are paying you still covers your costs, then for sure we can, we can offer that to you, that's no problem. But we obviously have a fixed rate that we pay, um, depending on the size. We do help out with petrol, but if you are you know, flying to another state or driving to another state, we'd rather use someone who's local um, and pay them the set of rates. But if you're happy to cover your costs um, for your flight or your travel, then that's no problem. We would still pay the normal rates. Are you considering assisting South African pilots to move to your other markets, um, like assisting with visa applications and job offers? Um, interesting, I haven't really thought of it myself. Um, there's obviously you know, thousands of pilots across the world. We have looked at sending like a pilot to another country just to get a big job done, because then it will make sense in terms of flights. Like if someone has to fly 2,000 hectares, um, paying for a flight would, would justify that um, income still. So um, it is an option. I think like if we got to a point where we had so much work that we don't have enough pilots for in those areas, then we would have to look at it as well. But at the moment, um, with our, our current scale, there's definitely enough pilots to cover the work we have. We do understand that eventually we're gonna hit a certain scale that is just you know tons of farmers um, so we'll obviously think about it at that time. Hi, could you put up your email address? Um, yes. Um, can I share that here? I'll just send you mine at the moment. That's just Matthew at aerobotics.com. So you're welcome to chat to me. Otherwise, drone partners at aerobotics.com is also work. Okay, um, from Kerry, when specifying overlap over the web interface of the Parrot Sequoia, do you have a preference for timed interval or GPS distance? Doesn't matter if the photo locations differ from the Phantom's RGB. So from my understanding, with the Sequoia and the MicroSense, you obviously set your overlap um, to the IP address and then it's triggered or self-triggered based on the heights and, and parameters you set out. So if it's done that way, it would normally take photos around the same time as the RGB, but if like the photo, RGB photos here and the MSP photos here, it doesn't really make much of a difference as long as it's in the same flight path. You know, obviously it needs to be on the same drone and it will take photos within the same flight path and just make sure that there's enough photos being taken. Um, so yeah, that if they're a little bit off, that doesn't really matter. Um, just as long as they are taken at the same height with the same overlap um, and the same amount of photos. Are you willing to give us a prototype to demonstrate to potential clients? Um, I'm not sure if you're talking about data there. If you are, we can do that. We do have a big, obviously, sales deck where we can share information on our product, um, how to sign up, what the data looks like, all those kind of things. Um, drone prices, 
it uh, depends where you are. If you're in South Africa, we'll give you South African prices. And then if you're in the States or anywhere else, we can give you the US dollar or the Euro prices. Uh, just send us an email with what you're looking for and we can give you prices on that. Um, do you manufacture only consulting service interpreting the data? Um, we don't provide like the final solutions to the data. We don't say, okay, you have thrips, you need to apply this solution. We only provide the farmer with the tools to identify what's wrong. So we would identify the problem trees. He would go to that tree and say, okay, it's thrips and I know what to do already. Most of the farmers know the solutions. Um, I guess at the end of the day, or we would like to provide the full solution and we would like to provide farmers with exactly what's wrong. Um, and that will hopefully come through our pest and disease detector. So with our machine learning algorithms, we want to be able to identify exactly what pest or disease that farmer might be facing like just through the drone imagery. So it's definitely something we want to do. Yeah, so if, you, if you're keen to get involved or just know more about the product, obviously I mentioned earlier, we do have a resellers um, agreement where you can get involved, learn more about the product and sell it to farmers and get them on board and get remunerated for that. Um, so we would take you through the whole sales deck or um, pitch deck with one of our sales guys and they can explain to you everything about the product or the ins and outs, um, obviously more specific than, than I have. Um, yeah, so get in touch with us and we can give you some more information on that. Any possibility on financing potential pilots from purchasing equipment through to licensing? So we have looked at this possibility, obviously Microsense cameras and drones are really expensive. So we have reached out to a few third party financial providers and we've kind of gone to them saying, listen, we have this issue. We we need to try and finance some of this, this equipment for our pilots. Um, obviously, we don't really want anything out of it. We just want to make sure that our pilots are equipped. The only issue with that is that there's a lot of risk involved. And so these third party providers that we've spoken to are not willing to take on this risk unless it's like three million dollars, I think, worth of liability. Uh, so um, I think maybe I'll, I'm best placed to answer this. So, we have had a couple of discussions with people. Um, it's still very early stage. Um, there's definitely an opportunity for it to possibly happen. Um, but there is a lot of risk in terms of, you know, it's a lot of like equipment that's out and around and it is a lot of money. So um, we are trying to figure out ways to mitigate those risks or at least like limit them to a level that will enable the financial institution to be comfortable with such lending. Um, as soon as we've come to an arrangement, uh, we'll, we would definitely make an announcement of some kind. Okay, and then just a couple of questions about licensing in South Africa. So in South Africa, which license is required for one to fly and where can one attain the license? So in South Africa, you need your remote pilot license, which is like essentially your driver's license for flying drones. And then you need an RSE as well, which is your remote operating certificate, which is basically your company getting permission to fly. So um, just I'll answer that in, conjunct in conjunction with another question, which is, did I hear correctly that Aerobotics cannot actually partner with a pilot with the ROC, I mean RPL, you need to partner with an ROC holding company and their pilots. So we partner with anyone that has an RPL and an ROC. So if you are a company that has an ROC, obviously that's great, but a lot of pilots don't have an ROC and don't have their own company. We would then help them partner with existing ROC holders and help them work under their umbrella ROC. So if you don't have your own or you've applied for one and you're still waiting for another two years till it gets approved, we can help you partner with um, existing ROC holders you would just pay them you know, a commission or a monthly fee for working underneath their ROC and having them do all your paperwork. Um, so as long as you have your ROC under a company, whether it's your own or someone else's, that's fine. But we can't use you unless you have that certificate as well. How are you able to assist us with working an ROC holder as an alternative investing ourselves? So yeah, I think I just answered that question. So if you are looking for an ROC holder to partner with, just send us an email and we can put you in contact with some of the existing ROC holders. How long before we have the citrus tree yields figured out? It's a great question. Um, we have been working on it. We are working on it quite um, intensely lately. Um, we hope to do... Yeah, I think, uh, to be honest, uh, it's a bit difficult for Matt and myself to really answer. It's more of a product question. So um, we can speak to the product team and just get a better... Um, understanding of the timing on that.
yeah, obviously it's a very tricky process, but we have one of the best data science teams. So I think hopefully we'll get that sorted for you guys. Um, there are a lot of vineyards in my area. Are vineyards included in your profile? Yes, so definitely we do um, process vineyards as well. Um, obviously it's difficult if there's no foliage or, or coverage on the trees. Um, if it's just bare vines, we can't really give much value to the, to the grower. Um, but we do process it and we do identify vines on a per tree level. We would ask the farmer for the tree and row spacing. But yes, we do do that completely. We mainly tree crops, so your citrus trees, your nuts, all those kind of things. Um, obviously those trees are a lot bigger and we can provide a lot more value and a lot more accurate stats on your, your height, volume, health, all those kind of things. But we are um, pretty accurate on the, the vineyards as well. So as long as there's a bit of foliage on those vines, um, then it's no problem, we can do that. If there isn't foliage, we can still do your basic visual and multi-spectral maps. We just won't do it on a, a per tree or per vine level. Um, I presume that we cannot fly with the Mavic Pro. Unfortunately not. So I know the, the Mavic Pro 2 Zoom or whatever, um, the newer Mavic Pros have a really good visual of at least 15 megapixels. The only problem with that is that they are too small to carry the extra payload of the microsense. So there's no way that you could put a microsense on the back of a Mavic and capture both visual and multispectral at the same time. It would just be too heavy for the Mavic. So unfortunately the Mavics won't work. Um, yeah. I think that is it for now. Um, if there are any other questions, we can respond to them via the chat. Otherwise, please feel free to send us an email or give us a call if you're in SA or actually anywhere is fine. Um, we're working all the time zones anyway. <laughs> so yeah, um, thanks very much for your time, guys. We will circulate the webinar after this, um, the presentation as well, as long as those three appendices as well. So yeah, that's it from us. Uh, thanks very much and we'll see you next time. Cheers, guys.